Friend, I'd love to take a couple of minutes to unlock something really powerful. I want to teach you something, a prayer, an ancient prayer that is historically significant, that's buried in the Old Testament. And when you know how to use this prayer, when you know that it is more than the words, but in fact it is the energy that drives the words and you bask in this energy, you will have the results that have so far eluded you. This is the prayer that moves mountains. Come on, let me show it to you. Well, hello there, you blessed, radiant, luxuriant, beautiful, wonderful, heavenly soul. I love you, and that's how I love to think of you. So I'm thankful for you for your company, for your uplifting comments, for your kindness, for your love. My name is Ben, this is Elevate, and you'll find me here every day, encouraging you, showing you how to come up higher, talking about manifesting your very best life. If you are new, a special warm welcome, give me a wave, say hi, tell me where you're from, I'd love, love to connect my energy with yours. We can do that by subscribing to the channel, join. Friend, I want to share something with you today straight from the Old Testament. And for the purposes of this exercise, it actually doesn't matter where you place your faith. It doesn't matter whether you have a traditional or fundamental Christian basis of your faith. It doesn't matter what you subscribe to. Because what we are talking about from this ancient scripture is actually energy. This is not about repeating words. This is not about learning a scripture and repeating it. This is about the energy. It's about sitting in the pocket with that energy and flowing with it. Now, Rita, I already know you are going to love this. We've spoken about this before. But for the rest of you gorgeous souls, let me share this with you. This is known as the Prayer of Jabez. You can find it in the Old Testament. I'm reading from the New King James Version today. And it's found in the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 4 and verse number 10. Have a listen to this. Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, O Lord, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me. And that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. And then it goes on to say, so God granted him what he requested. Imagine that. Imagine having a hotline straight to the throne room and making a request as wild and outlandish as, oh God, that you would bless me indeed, that you would enlarge my territory. Are you bold enough to pray a prayer like that? You know, we pray for specific things. We say, oh, I'll, I'll get rid of this headache for me or help me to get this outcome at work. And even the big things. But are we bold enough to stand with Jabez and call on the divine and say, oh, that you would bless me indeed. That you would enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil so that I may not cause pain. Now that's really important because so often we don't consider the fullness of the picture of our dream. But what you manifest and what I seek to manifest doesn't just affect your world and mine. It affects the world of so many people around about us. And the root of the energy of this prayer is in two things. It's first of all, having the boldness to stand before the divine and say, here I am, would you show up for me? Would you bless me right where I'm at? Would you command the blessing indeed? Would you enlarge my territory? That's not about putting on weight or having a bigger home or a bigger block of land. An enlarged territory is a growth, an exponential growth in all that you reign over. It's your finances, your relationships, your love. It's all of these things. And it is the energy of being bold enough to recognize that God is not floating in heaven on a cloud, holding a scepter and staff, and looking down upon his creation and judging all of the earth. That is not 
who and what God is. That is not where God dwells. Time and time and time again, we read from the very scriptures and it tells us exactly the place where God lives. It tells us where the kingdom of heaven is and what it's all about. And yet somehow we still have this antiquated view of a divine being judging the earth floating up somewhere on a cloud. Friend, if your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, then tell me the place that the Holy Spirit dwells. It dwells in its temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, Behold, the things you have seen me do, you will do and greater, for I will be with you. See, it is your body that is the temple of the spirit of the divine. It's not somewhere up floating on a cloud. You are intrinsically and intimately connected with that energy. When you recognize that it's already inside of you, that that power is not external to you, you can show up for yourself and you can say, bless me indeed, here we are. Let's see it in large territory. Let's look around at the landscape and the lay of the land. And let's see this baby expand. But the second part of the energy is equally as important. And it's simply found right at the very end of this verse. And it says this, that you would keep me from evil. Now that's good, isn't it? We all want to be kept from evil, but listen to the end of it. So that I may not cause pain. Would you keep me from evil so that I may not cause pain? How often have I, how often have you, my beautiful friend? Now let's be honest with ourselves here. How often have I, how often have you sought, prayed and wanted to be protected from evil for the goodness of ourselves? We want, we want mercy for ourselves and yet somehow we want justice for everybody else. I mean, have a look inside of your own heart and see if there's evidence of this. Don't beat yourself up. Be loving and gentle with yourself and recognize this is the space in which you can move forward. This is the space in which you can finally free yourself and shift from the person you are into the person you know you are being called to be. Being kept from pain is not just for your benefit. Being kept from pain, being kept from evil, is for the benefit of the collective vibration. It says right here that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. We should be concerned with our thoughts towards others, our words and our actions towards others, the language that we use. If we use sharp words, what does that profit us or the other person? And it's at that moment in time that the words of my beautiful and late grandmother ring in my ear. She'd say to me, Benno, if you don't have something nice to say, mate, best not to say something. But there's wisdom in that. See, it's not good enough for you and I to pray to be protected from evil. The reason that we should seek a divine protection, a hedge of protection, is so that we may not cause pain, not to ourselves, not to those that we love, not to those who look on to our life for an example, not to anybody around about us inside of our sphere of energy. We should not be causing pain. If you speak a word that is going to cause pain, then a closed mouth gathers no foot should be your portion. Now, don't beat yourself up. We all make mistakes. We all trip up. We all have things happen in the heat of the moment. And we are sharp with our words, with the words we use with ourselves. We are sharp with the words that we use when we address other people. Friend, it's time to come up higher. It's time to let go of that energy that will only ever keep you anchored to where it is that you are. When you move forward, you recognize that you can stand boldly at the throne and make a declaration and say, Oh Lord, that you would bless me indeed, that you would enlarge my territory. It's good to have that boldness. That is the boldness that makes the divine stand up, incline its ear and say, Oh wow, there's energy moving here. This person's got it. But that's only one piece of the puzzle. It all comes together when you recognize that in all of this journeying, the key here is not just being preserved from evil, 
It's being preserved from evil so that we may not cause pain. Now, for the times that we do cause pain, for the times we use sharp words, for the times we have a loose tongue and let it slip, for the times our actions speak louder than our words and they are hurtful, forgive yourself and forgive that person. Move forward quickly. Don't bask in that energy. The beautiful thing about the divine is that not only is it inside of you and inside of me, but it gives us endless opportunities to pass the small tests. Imagine back in grade school and you got an English test and you failed just by one point. Now imagine if your teacher said, I know you can do better than that, I believe in you. So here's what we're going to do. Here's another go, you get to have this test again. See how you go this time. I love you, I'm proud of you, I know you can do it. Imagine what a difference that would have made at school. And yet that's how the divine treats us. It says, hey, listen, I know you slipped up. That's okay. It's time to come up higher. I know you can. I believe in you. Let's move forward. Let's pass this test together. Friend, if you will commence every day with a prayer that is bold and believes for a better day and that also admonishes and respects those around about us and allows us to be mindful enough to not cause pain to ourselves and those around us, you watch your world change. There's a reason that this has been preserved in Scripture through thousands of years. My encouragement is, make the word personal to you and start making it the meditation of your heart. And then tell me what happens. Now I love you and I'm thankful for you. I pray that this has blessed you today. Would you make sure you subscribed to the channel? Come and visit with me again tomorrow too. Peace.